Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the X Dynamics Evolve, and we're gonna give this thing a flight test today. We're gonna kind of do a real-time setup, see how long it takes to get out of the bag, and we're gonna fly it and put it through as many paces as possible. We've got two batteries. We're just gonna see what this thing can do. So, anyhow, X Dynamics Evolve. Let's get ready for the maiden flight test and see how it does. Okay, so if you guys missed the um, kind of unboxing and setup and all that stuff, go ahead and check the card that'll pop up here. Also, I'll have the link in the description to the X Dynamics Evolve and also those other videos. This is going to be a series of videos. So there's going to be a couple of videos on this thing, a few actually. We're also going to do some range testing and stuff. So be sure to not miss those ones. I got the one with this big backpack, two batteries. I went ahead and threw in one of these uh, desiccant packs in there just to for good measure when it's all kind of cased up doesn't come with one so i have some from a bunch of other stuff so i just like to leave those packs in there just to keep everything dry so first things first here's the controller big old clamshell and what you'll notice is with the controller there's really no way to record the screen so i'm going to be dropping in and out with my hat cam just to show you guys how the screen's looking and be talking about it this one does have remember an hdmi output so not sure how that's going to work. I don't have anything to really record HDMI, so maybe in the future we'll definitely get something hooked up there. Popping out the drone, want to get this guy out first. Batteries are actually kind of holding the drone in a little bit, so get these batteries out. Put the Evolve down, and let's set this thing up. So first things first, we want to take off the gimbal guard. That thing just pops off like that. Making sure the camera is all clean and clear so we have the best possible picture. All right, so putting in the battery, we want the screen upwards. Slide that bugger in. Now I did do a calibration at home and it's really simple. It's just kind of like DJI where all you do is run through the paces it says on the screen. If we have to, we'll do another one here, but um, really self-explanatory, just rotate it, do what the screen says. So propellers, we have four clockwise and four counterclockwise. We're only gonna be using two of each. So I'm gonna grab two of these black ones and two of these ones with the white circles. And of course the ones with the white circles, we're just putting on the ones with the white circles on the motors. You can see how these ones don't have any white circles on them. So white to white, another white one on the opposite motor. These are really easy to put on. These are the twist locks and they seem like they're working really well. You don't have to push extra hard or anything. They're really well done. All right, so next thing we need to do is open up the clamshell and we'll power this thing on. So I wanna start in GPS mode, making sure this switch is in the center here. Click, click and hold on the power until we see a screen come on. There we go, X Dynamic screen there. This drone is kind of known from my experience. Um, if you have the controller too close, it has a connection problem. So probably put the controller, you know, a few feet away or else you're gonna have that issue. So that's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start up the drone now. So we just press, press and hold on the power and you'll see that X Dynamics logo come up and that means it's on take a look at the gimbal camera while it's booting up just so you guys know what to look for it takes a while for this one to boot up and you don't really want to do anything until you see that gimbal completely start it does kind of a side to side rock and then it's actually going to do like a turn down and a turn back up so see how it's doing that now so it's going to turn down turn back up now it should be ready to go so then we can kind of get back to our controller this doesn't have any like data connectivity unless you're to link it to like a hotspot on your phone or your home wi-fi so i pre-downloaded the maps for this area in the pukulani area here so i don't think i'm gonna have to put on a hotspot on my phone but if i do have problems bringing in those maps i'm gonna go ahead and just put like a tether on my phone wireless hotspot and then we'll link onto that so now all we do is press begin here and this is a pretty bright screen even with my polarized glasses on guys these are like polarized I can see both screens really well. There's my FPV screen there, and there's my bottom touch panel there. And uh, all we need to do is basically press start here. 
Looks like it's all linking up perfect. We have kind of our flight status ready to fly. If there's any problems with the compass or accelerometer, they, those would be in red and it would tell you you need to recalibrate those. Did those at home in the backyard, so they should be good to go. Very simple, like I was saying. Just follow the instructions on the screen. Drone battery 100%, ground station battery, which is this whole setup here. 100%, gimbal camera check marks. So what I need to do is go into settings, go into map, and you see this here, offline map. I have download, so I'm gonna click have download. And here we go, I, I downloaded and named this one Puka Park. So I'm gonna press enter. And what it should do is load that offline map it downloaded to the device. So I have a nice, a nice map here. Let's see if it actually brings it up. So I'm seeing kind of a, a time circle going. So I'm noticing this is not coming up yet. It's still kind of loading. Let's see what the deal is here. It's taking so long. I wonder if there's like a problem with it. So that's kind of frustrating. It's not a very big area either. I just, just about a mile square I downloaded, so. You know what I'm gonna try to do real quick, guys, is I'm gonna try to turn my phone into a hotspot so we can just have the real-time uh, maps come up. Connected, all right, nice. Anyway, let's just go ahead and start and get this thing up in the air and flying. Enter drone again. And looking for the map, there we go. So there's our map. You can go ahead and see everything here. I'm checking in with my hat cam so you guys can see this. Flight status, map there. So we're pretty much ready to go. And the way you can arm this thing is you can go down and in with a sticks or you can do an auto takeoff. I just wanna kind of show you how you can arm this. So if we press both sticks down and in, hold it. You see how that thing started up? So that's basically ready to take off if you wanted to. If you wanted to disarm it, you can just press down and hold or both sticks out and down. So we'll just press down and hold. Looks like it took about four seconds. And then it actually shows you your flight mission, which you can review if you wanted to. We didn't fly anywhere, so we'll just keep going. Check in making sure our gimbal is going up and down. Looks good. Hopefully you guys can see it on the screen. Really clear picture. And the cool thing, guys, I should mention about these rollers is you can go above 15 degrees above level on the gimbal. And if you want to reset to horizontal, just click in the roller like this. And that's a really cool feature, it just gets you back to level. Same thing with your EV value, if you're adjusting it for brightness in the screen, see how that's getting brighter on the screen? And that's gonna be directly in the video. If you get out of whack and you just wanna quickly get back to zero, press in that roller and you get right back to zero EV value. That's your exposure value. 17 satellites, uh, let's start recording. So gonna use this button, let's just take a picture first. One click. There we go, takes a little while, took a picture, and then one click on this one to go ahead and start recording. So, clicking and we are recording. Cool. Let's just try to do a button launch. So if we click it once, ready to take off, came up on the screen, press and hold again to take off. So press, press and hold. Looking at the drone. All right, a little bit of vibration. That was kind of weird, right when it was taking off. I saw some vibration on the arms. So it should be using like the LiDAR and stuff to kind of hover, right, to look at the ground. And so let's just do a quick walk around. I'm not touching the controls yet. That's exactly where it left, it took off from. Let's push up a little bit to get us more eye level. And let's just kind of walk around the front here. Again, I am recording the video. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the channel. <laughs> I hope this is gonna be an informative review for you of the Evolve. So we're just looking at the stability. There's really no wind right now. We just really wanna see how stable this thing is. It's looking really good. It's quite loud because it's a bigger drone, but it did move off of its home point just a little bit, but it is sticking right in the air there not being really influenced at all by a little bit of wind. So it looks pretty good. Let's just go ahead and see what our um, speeds are in GPS. We're gonna push up uh, all the way up, throttle up. So that's full throttle. Let's see if we have any speeds here on the screen. I 
don't have any vertical speed, but I can see my altitude on the bottom left. So 200 feet. We'll go to about 300 feet here. Letting off the stick. And I'm just looking at the screen, it looks pretty good. Everything looks great. Let's go ahead and turn our gimbal up and down, see how this works. So, okay, so the video got a little bit uh, garbly there and it was delayed for a second. That could be because it's directly ahead. So I wish I could show you that guys this, but it looks like it's pretty digitally pixelated at 325 feet up until I like move the screen around like this. So it's gonna have some antenna dependencies on the way it's pointed. So I'm just kind of moving up and down. There's all the way up as high as that thing can go. And then if we wanted to get back to level, remember we can just push that in there. So, okay, let's come back down, see how fast it's coming down. A full stick down and we're looking for like jello in the video and any kind of weird stuff. Let's pull the gimbal down while we're doing this. Let's see how it copes with a direct down shot. Well, it's coming straight down. I can't see really anything on my FPV except a little bit of shaking maybe, but I am full throttle down. Looks like it's going maybe a couple miles per hour coming down. Let's see how it copes with a direct let off of the throttle right now. So that was cool. When it got maybe about 10 feet, it seemed like the LiDAR picked up the ground and it just kind of slowed down a little bit more than I was going. Let's pick that gimbal back up. Remember, we can just press it right here one time and watch the camera. Boom, I just flicked it, camera's up. Cool, let's see what our yaw is like. So let's do full yaw and GPS. It's looking okay. That's our full yaw speed. Seems to be going fine. Okay, and let's just kind of do a couple of speed runs here in GPS. So I'm gonna turn it this way. I do have the camera directly horizontal. And let's see how it kind of copes with keeping its altitude here. So full stick forward now. Nice. I don't see it dropping at all. Just let off and it seemed to do okay. Looked like it dropped a little bit right over that hump there. Let's come back at us at full speed. Let's see how it does. So that's your full GPS speed. So this is gonna be kind of more of like, you know, a photography drone. So it seems like it is coping with this pretty easy. Um, trying to find our speed here. Let's see if I just go full throttle forward again. There we go. So we're, looks like we're just around 12 miles per hour. I was looking at this little mile per hour speedometer here and it was going about 12. So that's our max and GPS. So this first battery will just be for like basic flight functions. See what it can do. Let's try this again. So letting off right now, right in front of me. Looks like it is gonna take about 20 feet to kind of settle, come back here. And let's rotate to the left. So it looks like it takes a little while to get situated and figure out what it's trying to do. A little bit of wander in the yaw there. Anyhow, uh, we can also do like an attitude mode. Let's see if we flip this switch all the way to the left. So this should turn off our GPS. See how it's not locking? It's gonna keep its altitude, but it's gonna wander with the wind. See how it's wandering back into the right. So this should be one that we can go really fast in. So let's go ahead and go full stick forward here in attitude mode. Let's see how fast we can get going. Yeah, so I'm going like 24, 30, Wow, a lot quicker. I don't wanna fly over these houses too much. Getting about 36 miles per hour, cool. So go ahead and turn around and come back. 
quickly as possible here. Oh, I just lost video. So I'm gonna go back into GPS. That was a little bit scary. Video is dropping out, guys. This is a high interference area, but we are only 1,358 feet away. I'm gonna come in, come on back in full GPS mode. So it looks like maybe they need to work on their signal a little bit. Totally black and totally dropped out. Basically a thousand feet away, I'm still getting jitters and I gotta move my controller around. Wow, so not good in um, high interference areas. We're definitely gonna do a range test in the country. So I guess you could account that as a range test. Uh, and really, you've got a solid signal up to about a thousand feet. This area is known for having a lot of interference, so I'm not gonna knock it too much until we get into the country. So now I'm able to see it fine with my hat cam. I can see my flight route on the bottom there. Um, you know what we'll do is while we're at it, I'll back up here and we'll just do a return to home. See how accurate this is. So let's see how we do this. So we're gonna press home button there. It says ready. So we gotta do a press, press and hold. And it's counting down three, two, one. Return to home. And then we have a return to home voice. <laughs> so all the while guys, we are looking at the camera and the video. I'm tilting the gimbal back up a little bit. And I'll have this high def up on the screen from the drone too. I'm gonna rotate the gimbal down again, all the way down. Oops, I just clicked it in. So be prepared for it to go back up if you click that roller in. There we go. And let's just kind of see how close it lands. Um, I'm at 38% power. And we've basically been recording video for 10 and a half minutes, 11 minutes. So it's like gonna be a 15 minute flyer, right? This is where it's returning to home. Let's see if I push up. Yeah, I can kind of stop it. If I wanna stop return to home. Oh, okay, something came up on the screen. Are you sure you wanna stop? Because I pushed up on the throttle. I'm gonna press okay. Are you sure you wanna quit? Yeah, so it little, took a second for it to register, but I did cancel out of return to home. And now I'm just kind of manually flying it. So the return to home accuracy, let's talk about that real quick. That's a good 10 feet away. Um, that's where I launched from, and that's where it wants to land. It did kind of shift maybe to about here when it first launched, so maybe in this area, not a super good uh, return to home. Pressing that button to get the camera back up. So I'm gonna get up and let's try some of these pictures. get up a bit so it's out of everybody's way and we'll take some pictures of the West Maui mountains here let's see if we can take pictures while it's recording so we're recording for 12 minutes I'm gonna press the picture button yeah it did take a picture okay we'll see the quality compared to the other pictures when it's not recording I'm just gonna kind of leave it recording for now and uh, let's see what kind of like panoramic shot remember this is all just um, manual controls right now guys we're not doing any kind of advanced flight settings right now just want to see what we can get if we're trying to do some really smooth panoramic videos see how smooth the, the video could be now the top screen remember is not um, touch screen so it's not like I can click on this screen and focus right it this is all touch screen down here it's showing my flight route where the drone is where I am the screens actually getting pretty hot because we're in the direct sunlight but I can see the screens pretty well you know it's pretty bright right now and uh, I don't know if you guys can see this but the screens do look pretty bright if you can see to my hat cam there uh, of course we could all, always go into manual shutter speed and ISO if we wanted to, but right now it's just auto. Okay, so I'm gonna stop recording on the video and then let's take another picture of those West Maui Mountains, just with the button. And I'll let you guys be the judge 
of picture without recording and picture recording. We'll go back into recording again. We're at 17% power. Maybe we should kind of see what it does since we're directly overhead. Um, when it does want to come down. Let's mess with the EV a little bit. So I'm rolling this roller to the left. You see how it's kind of darkening things up. All right, so we had a warning and a little buzzer. Low battery is less than 15%. Pressing that right clicker to get the Evo value, EV value back to zero. Okay, it's beeping at me. This is interesting. I've got like a red tinge around the screen. Start, return to home, we'll force land. Okay, I have a little thing on the screen. It'll force land when it's less than 10%. So there was a warning and then I pressed okay to return to home. So let's see where it thinks its home is this time. Should be the same spot, right? So keep in mind guys, on this one, it's gonna force land at 10%. This is how it's doing on its own. Definitely a loud beeping here. <laughs> Because it is only 9%. Wow, you can really exhaust this battery. And it looks like it's hopefully still recording video. Gimbal back up. Let's see where it lands and how it lands. All right, it looked, saw the ground. It slowed way down. And it looks like it has a decent return to home landing and a really soft touch and then it turns off the propellers immediately. So it's using that LiDAR. Shutting down, it tells us the 7% on the screen. Press, press and hold to shut down. If I kind of touch more of the battery inside these little cooling fins here, the actual battery is way hotter than out here. That is pretty darn hot. Like I can't leave my thumbs there or it feels like they're gonna burn, so. Keep in mind this battery will get hot. That was kind of a lot of information on that first battery. We saw how it flew, saw how accurate it was, and also kind of a range test as well in this uh, high interference residential area. So let's pop in that second battery and see what we can do. Okay guys, got the second battery in there, 100% battery. I thought you guys should know, um, I've had this thing for about a week and since my first unboxing, uh, it hasn't had any updates, so I did try to do like a force update and see if there are any updates on the controller, on the firmware of the craft or anything, and there has been no updates whatsoever. Within that week, um, I charged both batteries to full charge for the unboxing, and I will say that they are smart batteries that discharge themselves down to 60% within that week, so at least we know we have smart batteries. Everything looks good on our ready to fly status on the map. That's kind of interesting. My video is just, if you can see in my hat cam, completely black, so I'm not sure what happened there. Can I still move the camera up and down? Yeah, so the gimbal's still working. Let's turn the controller off and then turn the controller back on. Leave it to me to find the issues, guys. And that's what I'm here to do, just to really tell you how it is. Even if there are cons, you guys need to know what you're buying and what you're spending your money on. Now it's connected. And let's start here. Wow, still got a black screen, so I have no video. So, bummer. Okay, well let's uh, power this thing down, power it back up, and hopefully we get our video back. Okay, let's try this again. So, restarted everything. Keep in mind, guys, it's really hot today, and there's this is a black drone, black controller, so hopefully there's no overheating issues. There we go. So you can see we have our video there on the screen. So just a glitch that happens, I guess, just restart. Once in a while when you start up, even in the middle of the field like this, I keep getting this error saying gyro's not healthy. Uh, one time before I got uh, compass not healthy, even though I'm just in the middle of this vacant field. So it looks like you may need to like start this drone a couple times. You know what I mean? Uh, restart to get these problems worked out. So just wanted to touch base with it. I'm gonna have to restart it and see if that kind of goes away. Restart it and still getting this warning accelerometer's not healthy now. I don't know if you can see this on the touch screen, but it says accelerometer X, please try to restart drone. So what do we do? We just keep retrying? Cause I did do all the gyros in my house and make sure that it was on a level surface already. Can't really do that in the park here cause it's uneven ground. So 
guess I'm gonna try to restart it again. Third time's a charm, I guess. I just restarted everything and now I have no warning. So another thing they're gonna need to work on in the firmware, make sure all that stuff is taken care of. That beep was just home point is locked indicator. We have 17 satellites right now. So really you can't even launch without the accelerometer and stuff being happy. So I can see that if you're trying to get this thing up and do some quick shooting, that might be an issue. If that happens, just keep restarting the thing. Um, anyway, that's how it is and that's how it's actually working. If I click this over to the right, um, now I get this thing pop up on the screen here. I'm not sure if you can see it in my hat cam, but uh, we press this little box thing here and then we can do point of interest, tripod mode or sport mode. So uh, course lock and waypoints are not active yet. So it looks like they have to update the firmware there. So I guess what we'll do first is try a tripod mode now that we're in smart modes here. So let's click on tripod. Reduce flight speed and change sensitivity to achieve more stable and smooth shooting effect. Okay, so basically that's on. And let's see what the difference is in our yaw. I'm recording in the 4K, so that's our maximum yaw speed. Let me bring it down a little bit here. So there's our maximum yaw. Still only about five mile per hour variables right now coming from this direction. So there's our yaw speed. Go ahead and let you see how the video looks in the 4K 30 there on the screen. And let's see what our flight speed is now. So we'll go full throttle kind of that way. So that's full stick forward and you can see how slow it is. So just really for really cinematic shots here, only looks like we're going about six miles per hour max on the speedometer there. So we'll go over this little hump. Oh, that was interesting. It kind of lifted up when it went over the hump that time. Letting off the stick. Oh, let's go ahead and come back. I'm gonna turn it here. Let's get facing me in the video. And then we'll just full stick forward, come right back. Watch it kind of go up when it goes over that hump. That's the LiDAR is kind of hitting the hump and seeing it. It went up and then it's kind of coming. Yeah, it's kind of coming back down just a little bit because this does have the terrain follow, right? So let's demonstrate that one more time by going over my chair there. Let's see if it does that again. So I'm gonna get it right on the other side of this chair and let's see how good it does at seeing things and going over them. Of course, it doesn't have any front obstacle avoidance. So I'm gonna get it right there just so we're just almost hitting the chair. And let's just fly forward, see what it does. So see that, it went up a little bit. Didn't really do much over the controller there, but <laughs> it did go up just a tad when it went over that chair. So I guess that's just the feature of it. So that's basically um, cinematic mode, guys. Tripod mode. Forward, reverse, and turning is all slowed way down. Let's see the, what the roll is left and right. There you go, you can see the roll is also very slow. That was full right, now this is full left. Also maxing out at right around five to six miles per hour. Cool, so that's the tripod mode. This is not a quiet drone, so I kinda wanna get out of my microphone here. Then we'll go ahead and try some other things. So on the screen here, I need to press X. Are you canceling tripod? Yes, with a check mark go back into this advanced mode here and here's sport mode okay so let's hit sport mode here doesn't give us any warning it's just in sport mode and let's go for it so full stick forward here going a bit faster stopping quicker up and down is a lot faster full stick up and there we go. So that's how fast it is going up. Can't really see much on the screen as far as our vertical speed. But what we really wanna do is test our speed going forward, right? So I don't wanna go over too many houses, but I do wanna test this out. So maybe we'll go just straight that way and full stick forward. Let's see what it does. Let's see how fast it starts going. 
looking at my speedometer and wow it's going 42 miles per hour we're going with a little bit of breeze so right around 45 guys and while we're at it should we do a range test we are recording in 4k i do have the controller up here yeah maxing out just about 45 miles per hour video maybe getting a little grainy there you go so i'll have that up on the screen so you can see what this is all about distance a little better this time look at this 2,000 feet 3,000 feet all right so i'm going to stop it at 3,000 looks like you see that on the screen i'll have that up it's really dropping out we'll go ahead and hit return home and it's going to return home in sport mode and let's see what this does all right for some reason it it's asking me if I want to exit out of RTH on the screen again. So maybe a little bug they can kind of fix there. All right, let's see if it, let me just cancel it here on the screen. I don't want to exit out. If I was to press okay, it would have exited out, so. All right, you can see that the drone facing us is way worse in the video signal. Still have a black screen. I'll have this up on the screen, guys. But I can see my telemetry on the bottom of the distance from me. 2200. So at least I can see that. Um, can I see the drone on the map? There it is. So, yeah, I couldn't see the drone on the map, but I could see the distance on the top screen here. So that was cool, at least you know it's coming back to you if you have no video or no map there. But um, I can see it on the map now and I can see everything. Video came back in. Let's try to adjust the gimbal down a bit while it's flying back. See how stable this is? Flying over the skate park. And then right after this, guys, we'll go ahead and do a point of interest around this skate park. See how this is all gonna work out. I'll just let it come down a little bit and then we'll do a point of interest. It's always nice to give it multiple tries on a return to home as well. See what we can expect. So this one, not so good right above you. Do you see that video signal? Gets pretty blotchy at just around 300 feet. So the antennas must be situated where it's not very good if it's like directly above you. Oh, there it is, VS. Okay, three and a half miles per hour. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. I'm canceling out of sport mode right now. It seemed like me canceling out of sport mode did cancel the return to home. But now check this out. I have this X up on the screen that's stuck there. You can see that in my hat cam, I'm not sure, but it's stuck. I cannot get that X away, so maybe a little bit of an issue there. Let's just try to pull back into GPS mode. There, now that X went away. So maybe some stuff they can work on in a couple of updates. This time I'm just gonna go ahead and do a auto launch. So click, click and hold. Boy, that auto launch is a little bit scary. Did you see that? So if I were you, I would um, just do a manual manual launch every time. Let's try that again. I'm gonna bring it down and kind of do a manual landing, or try to, right there. You see that oscillation in the arms, a little bit scary. And uh, this time, let's go ahead and try to arm it manually, and then this might be the way to do it. So you don't possibly flip over. Arming motors, just letting it sit there for a second. And then we'll go ahead and launch. Yeah, so I'm more comfortable with that. That auto launch was a little precarious. Anyway, let's get up here. I wanna get kinda of high so I'm not bugging these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and start recording on the 4K. Go ahead and get up. A couple hundred feet. And we're gonna do our point of interest, so. 
I think about 250 feet should be about good. And we'll go over to skate park and do all of our advanced functions here, go over. So remember, you gotta tilt the camera down so you know you're exactly over your object. So we'll go over it here and just hover right there. So that's gonna be our center point. I'm gonna flip into S mode and it should still be recording and everything. I do have this pop up here, so I'm gonna press it. Point of interest. And now it's saying set the point of interest again, so set. And then our altitude. I'm gonna go ahead and get this up to, looks like it's in meters, so I'm gonna set it for about 115 meters. And a radius, I want a pretty wide radius. So we'll go about 50 meters. Maybe a little less. Okay, so save. Press and save there. And thing we can't forget is to press play. So pressing play there, and now it should start going to its location. I'm not gonna touch the gimbal. Let's see if it can actually move the gimbal on its own. I'll go ahead and move the gimbal up if it really doesn't want to do that. No, so it doesn't want to pull the gimbal up on its own. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this gimbal up with my left finger. And so here we go. This is how it's supposed to be doing a circle around point. And I'll let you guys be the judge of this. Oh boy, so it stopped recording. I gotta record again. Sorry about that. Uh, so something they may want to fix, if it's already recording, leave it recording because it stopped recording when I started that. So here we go, have it up on the screen, 4K, 30 frames per second. A circle around point. I wanna be farther out, so I'm gonna pull back on the right stick. It pauses everything, and it's letting me go further backwards. I'll go to about there, and a little bit of sway there. But right when I let off, it kind of continued on its point of interest. And let's see if it's kind of sticking with it there. If I do push up on the controller, it is climbing and keeping that return or circle around point, point of interest going. So that's good. Maximum altitude reached, 400 feet. So this is it in some wind. It's fighting some wind up there. It's gotta be around maybe 15 miles an hour. And that's, I saw a little bit of sway there, guys. So you be the judge of how that looks. So I haven't touched the yaw at all. And you can see how it's kind of getting off of its center point a little bit. Let's see if I can yaw to the left and fix that. No, I can't. I got yaw all the way to the left. So you can't adjust your center point unfortunately if you do get out of whack let me roll to the left a little bit what's that doing exactly nothing okay well anyway that's what to expect you may get a skewed center point for your point of interest if you try to move it so i'd really probably adjust those settings you know what i mean before you do anything so let's move this up and let's kind of see what we can kind of get as a circle around point panoramic shot. This is where we'll probably, I just clicked it in there. We'll probably see a little bit of camera shake if it does have issues in this situation. A lot of drones have a really hard time doing this, keeping their yaw stability super stable. There's the West Maui Mountains. Seems fairly smooth in my view. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. I'm pressing stop and check mark for yes. And you can see how it just stopped right there. And anyway, um, beautiful day again. Let's just hover right here, maybe adjust our EV settings, brighten it up a little bit. So I'm rotating this to the right. You can see that it's getting brighter, the image still recording so even when you stop your smart function I'm gonna go back into GPS here it still is recording but just remember when you do start that point of interest it stops recording if you already were 
So rotating right, you can see how it's getting washed out on our EV. If I click it in, boom, it goes back to zero. And then if I rotate this uh, roller to the left, you see how dark it's getting. That's going into a negative EV. And click it in again to get back to zero. Anyway, I think that's it, guys. That's all I wanted to do. I think we went over everything possible. There Again, there are no waypoints. Let me land this thing and we'll sit down and we'll do kind of a sit down pros and cons and talk about what we just did. Return to home. When it gets hovering right here, I'll go ahead and kind of get the sun on me and then you can see my hand waving. And we'll see what the latency is um, kind of farther away. Because in the house, when the controller was super close up, it was a little bit to be desired, like DJI or worse, latency. Oh my gosh, there's like a whole swarm of bees around it. Yikes. I'm gonna push up. Uh, how can we cancel this? I'm not seeing anything pop up on the screen. So let me go up and then press and press and hold to return to home again. How do I cancel it? Okay, this is weird because it just keeps returning to home. And I'm yawing and moving it around and it keeps wanting to land. So another glitch, leave it to me to find glitches. And it really wants to drop. So I've got to just keep pushing it up. And that wasn't a very smooth landing either. There wasn't really any way to get it out of return to home. Before, there was something that popped up when I moved the sticks, but possibly when you cancel that thing initially while it's flying, uh, you may not be able to cancel that return to home again, and that's, that's a little bit scary to me. I'm going to launch one last time, and we're going to try that latency, okay? It's not really recording right now, so I'm going to see what the latency is. Just looking at my screen, I'm going to move my hand, so possibly you guys can see this, everything in the camera. That's not bad. I don't think that's under 10 milliseconds. Hopefully you guys can see that going on. Okay, now I'm gonna start recording and let's see in 4K. Let's see if that's worse or better or what. Looks maybe the same or a little bit worse. But I don't, I don't think that's less than 10 milliseconds. Maybe less than 100. Let's land it right here. Let's see how easy it is to manually land. Does seem to want to wa want to wander, guys. So you're gonna have to get in your position and just land it now, and it will bounce a little bit. So nature of the beast. It's getting a lot of backdraft. A lot of wind is coming down off those propellers, so you're gonna get that kind of that vortex under the drone. That kind of makes it a little unstable this one seems a little worse than most like it was hard for me to really center it down and land it just because it's pushing so much so much air back into the solitude of the chair and let's see what we can say about this evolve it is a pretty cool drone i mean wow the carbon fiber big drone couple things doesn't last very long seems like only up to like 15 minutes cool thing is you can go into your flight logs and check it out I can play my flight log on the screen kind of like DJI does um, I do have the sticks up on the screen but it doesn't seem like those are showing my uh, which way my fingers are moving while I fly for right now I tried it a couple times so kind of cool but you can't really zoom out on this screen it's just kind of like the zoom level what you get and you can kind of see on the top of the map where you went really cool how you can preview your videos and you can immediately play them since this is a, basically a smart device and down here it shows it playing and then that's the actual video uh, preview this isn't going to be the high high def 4k but you can see how it's doing a well enough job at previewing the footage you got so you can do in the field previews which is really good and i can also go ahead and look at my photos by pressing that and the photos come up on there and actually those are also coming up on here a couple of things they can work on you saw a few software glitches return to home accuracy this is not going to be a precision landing drone it gets you like within 10 feet of its home point 
and then you have to take over or just make sure the area is clear. So if you're looking for a precision landing drone, this is not definitely not it. The LiDAR seemed to work pretty well. A little bit of issue where when I was yawing once in a while, it would want to drop a little bit. I'm not sure if the, the LiDAR was working at times when it was doing that. GPS mode we tested and you can see the speeds I had up there while we were testing it. And then it's got the attitude mode where it just cuts off the GPS while you're flying and just lets you fly and drift with the wind. You can get going pretty fast. I think we went up to like 35 on that. And then to get into smart mode, you have to go into the smart mode switch, which you flipped over to the right. That gets you into the advanced functions we went into. You know, if we wanted to do the point of interest, if we wanted to do the tripod mode, which is really good because it kind of turns everything way down so you can get some good cinematic video, which I'll have had up and you guys could see how that was performing through the whole flight. And then it also had a sport mode in the smart mode function. I think we were going with the wind and this is about five, maybe 15 up there and we were getting going around 45 miles per hour. This does record the video to the smart device. It records the video I'm seeing to it, less all of the telemetry, which I just figured out. So I'll have had this video that I'm seeing, less the telemetry up, and you'll see the breakup of what I was seeing and how far it went. Um, so we kind of did a couple of range tests, and it seemed like going over telephone lines and if you're in a congested area, it seemed to get between 1,000 feet, and then I was going that way and it got about 3,000 feet, I believe, two or 3,000 before you could really get the breakup on the screen. It seemed like the drone, when it was going away from you, had pretty good signal, but when it turned back to you, that was where the antennas weren't picking it up very well. Anyways, links for the Evolve uh, in the description down below as usual, and also for the other videos, I doing a series on this one so go ahead and check all those videos out really in-depth unboxing and just looking at every single function on the controller itself in the application on that unboxing video if you wanted to see that more in depth and then also i'll have other videos up as well trying to get some cinematic shoreline footage and also we'll try to do some nighttime see how the low light is with this camera here in hawaii and of course everything else i'm using my cameras and all my stuff i use in my reviews will also be linked in the description i hope that was informative for you and i will see you in the next video thanks for watching